Cheers! Oh man, that's a way too up close. <laughs> I'm trying to grab the glass, man. Uh, cheers, I do my grooves. How the heck are you? I am Tom the Beer Whisperer. Here's one I just found today. Uh, I haven't had anything from this brewery. In fact, I haven't even heard of them before today when I saw their stuff in the beer store. Wheat Heavy Scotch Ale. Yeah, so they make it clear on their website that this is their take on the classic style. They make it real clear that it is it's certainly a, an American craft version of, and it uses a, a hefty portion of Kansas wheat. Uh, and having said that, it is uh, 8.6% 50 IBUs. Although I think on the website it had it listed as 8.3, but anyway, I'm going to believe the bottle. Having worked for a brewery, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I remember times at the brewery I was working at, I mean, the bottle would have a specific uh, or a certain ABV listed. The website would have a different ABV listed, and, and the board to tap room would have a different ABV listed. So, it, it, you know, it's up to interpretation, apparently. I don't know if it's like that nationwide. I know in Arkansas they give you a, 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 a .3. To work with one direction or another. The nose is, is very nice. Yeah, you can feel that wheat in there. You really can. You feel those those you know those, those big malty, uh, wee heavy Scotch ale like notes as well. Those cigar malt like notes. Feel like I get just the slightest hints of molasses on the nose as well. Oh, that's that's uh, wow, that's a uh, that's good, man. That's really good. Yeah, that wheat really softens the body and actually adds to the body. I feel like I get, I feel like I'm getting some herbal notes. I feel like I, I get, get a little bit of, of anise in there. It's very nice. It's very nice beer. It really is. If you were a cigar or smoker, uh, I, I'm not. Not fundamentally, I guess. <laughs> That's just another expenditure I can't afford. But yeah. <laughs> I used to every once in a while, you know, I used to have friends uh, that, that I'd hang out with that uh, would smoke, so every once in a while I would, but uh, the smell really bothers my wife, so I haven't in quite some time. It has been a while. And, I, you know, I'm just, I don't know that, not that I didn't enjoy it, I mean, I, you know, I don't know, I, I didn't enjoy it enough to do it on a regular basis, I suppose. I didn't have the same affinity for it as, as this. But it does feel like the type of beer that would go perfect well with it with a nice cigar. Or even if you want to have, you know, a little whiskey accompaniment. Uh, if you want to have a nice single malt on the side, hey man, do your thing. <laughs> I, I, can, I can see drinking a nice single malt, pairing it with this. It's very nice. Single malt scotch, if you like, but because it's an American version of a wee heavy, yeah. Personally, I mean, there, there, there's a few uh, single malt uh, uh, American whiskeys that I would pair this with. The one that I've had most recently, the Lead Slingers. I mean, that, that I, I can really see that pairing nicely with this. Ounce and a half or two neat on the side, yeah, man. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. I was going to put some music on the background, but I forgot to change it. I've got a, I don't know if you can hear it, but I've got this backdrop on the TV where it's a, uh, you know, it's a fireplace with a couple pumpkins, you know, little. <laughs> so I got the same stuff. You're hearing some crackles. That's what it's, I was going to flip it over to my Spotify, but the mind wanders. Um, yeah, I guess some big multi notes. I, again, I feel like I get just the slightest hint of molasses in there. As a style like this, you really shouldn't find fruit notes, but again, it's really up to you and in, in your interpretation. Mm. 
sometimes I can see how certain malt notes could be construed as, say, uh, you know, very dark or overripe plum-like notes. I mean, I'm not getting those here, but I'm saying I, I can see how some would interpret it that way. You get these nice, you know, kind of a leather-like notes. Ah, it's just, it's just done impeccably well. Mm, gosh, that's good. pot roast in the oven, I relax and have a beer, and then I'll get back to work. <laughs> this is a nerve calmer, man. <laughs> no, I haven't, I, I hadn't even heard of this brewery before, and I asked the guy uh, at the beer store, uh, and he said he hadn't, he wasn't familiar with them either, and, and they usually, you know, taste a lot of products that come in, but he said he hasn't had any of them. So I, I picked up two, they had, a, they had several, uh, you, you know, it's funny, sometimes when a new beer comes to town, they usually have like one or two versions, you know, one or, one or two of their styles, sometimes three, but they, they had uh, they had several, I think they had five or six, uh, and I picked up two, I picked up this Wheat Heavy, because it just sounded interesting, right? And although it's not quite fall weather here, we're starting to get there, and it is fall, so why not? I'm starting to feel, I'm starting to feel it, man. Um... But I also picked up their double IPA, which describes itself as a, a West Coast style double. So I'm curious what they're doing with that. Uh, but I, but I really do like what they've done with this. I like what the wheat does. Wheat adds a little bit of sweetness. It also softens the body. It also adds to the body a little bit. It does the same thing it does to whiskey. You know, a lot of you know, wheated bourbons have become popular because wheat. The wheat softens the body and adds a little bit of sweetness. And that's kind of what it does to this beer, too. It adds a little bit to the body, but it softens the body a little bit and adds a little bit of sweetness. Again, I, I feel like I'm picking up some, some herbal notes in there as well. Just a little hints of anise here and there. Uh, you get those like like licorice like notes let's say i feel it on the nose i feel it right at the finish as well it does have a very nice finish it really does very enjoyable beer yeah but yes i mean the more i drink this the more i want i would love to be pairing this with, with the whiskey that's in my head i'm pairing i don't have a single malt handy um i, I don't i'm not a big scotch drinker anyway there's one small i'll drink a single malt but but i really prefer i really prefer when i can find them uh american american whiskeys uh, american single malts because they tend to take it just a little bit different direction I haven't had it in a while because it's not available in my neck of the woods. I used to buy it when I was working in Arkansas. But Rocktown, Rocktown in Little Rock, there's a hickory smoke whiskey that's just incredible. And there used to be one I could get here, and I can't find it anymore. It's from Spirits of St. Louis, out of St. Louis, obviously, uh, from Square One Brewery. They do a cherry wood smoked whiskey that, oh, uh, that thing just knocks my socks off. Ah, uh, so there you go. Anyways, I digress. I am Tom the Beer Whisper, Beer Evangelist, Plus Beer Drinker, Per Beer of Wisdom, and all right, good guy. Cheers, guys.